Hi, I'm back with an exciting new feature, or I should say a revision of an old feature done properly. This is September 10th, 2019, and I've just released today a update on the condition page template. Condition pages are based on published PubMed studies finding that people with a particular condition compared to controls are higher or lower than the others. So now, the problem comes in is that often the higher or lower is vague as to how much higher, how much lower, but also they often are using averages. Averages are problem, very problematic when you're dealing with, with non-bell curve shapes. Um, simple example, the distribution of bifidobacteria is such that the average amount is so skewed that 80% of people in the same data set that I got the average from were below average. In other words, here's an average, 80% was less than that, 20% were above that, but all the numbers together puts a very high average, and whereas the medium, the 50% above or below, is way, way, way to the left. So using averages and trying to work from averages is a well it's a naive approach so my idea or my proposal which i've implemented in code wise is okay we know higher or lower and we have our data now broken down into quantiles which can be as small as six percent in each quantile and we can now say okay so does higher mean you are in the top 6%, in the top 12%, 12, 18%, 12, or top 24%, or the bottom? And if we use that as a measure of whether or not you are high or low, we actually can make some good progress. And only make good progress, we actually, I believe, can successfully combine data from different studies together to determine whether or not you have a high probability of having a particular condition so just before we go over to walk through the pages the post walks through and gives you the probability and i was using 16 here as an easy number to work with and as you see the probability of being five percent zero or five or less requires six out of 16 matches when we are looking at just six percent the process can be done never way and you can actually play with it yourself here is a chi square calculator the link is in the thing if we have six if we are sampling so that we expect one out of 16 people to be in there and we have the average numbers being six and ten Oops, sorry, that should be 15, not 16. So we have 16 here, we have 16 here. And when the program automatically calculates, we see that we're all the way down to 0 0.325. So when you have this number of matches, it's highly unlikely that there's randomness. Doesn't mean you have the condition, but it means that the pattern which is associated with the condition and your shifts have a, have a strong association. I hate the word association, but it's the best word. If we go up to seven and nine, again, 16 here, 16 here, we're down to 1%. If we get up to eight and eight, and we have half of them, we are 0.5%. So extremely, un extremely unlikely that there is an association happening there. It doesn't mean you have the conditions just means that we have some statistical significance. Okay, let's go in and look at the pages now. When you go into the pages, you will notice that we have, sitting over here, we have condition templates, and click on any one of them, doesn't matter. It will go in and bring up the page. And we have the following interesting thing. At the top, you can say, okay, you can choose, how do you define high or low? High or low being in the top, on bottom 6%, 12%, 18%, or 24%. In other words, the top quarter or the bottom quarter is the extreme case. You have over here 
all of your samples and arrange by date so you can go and pick a particular sample. Now, so you pick your percentage you want to try and the samples, and then you scroll down. And what you will find is that the numbers will show up down below with a, uh, excuse me while I readjust the screen uh, for a second time. Okay. Ugh. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Okay, now we are much better. So in this case, we have just one showing up in yellow. Down at the bottom, I give a warning. By caught by chance, 3% and above are expected to be 5% or less, or one is below 1%. In other words, from this sample, which was done before uh, a while back, basically it's no match. If I go to an older sample, we end up with a lot of things being highlighted. Um, we have the same number expected, which is currently free, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven things highlighted. So chances are one or another could be could be representative. Um, and you may need to do some looking up at what variety of conditions. It's this here particular one deals with information of the spine. Um, depression, which is common in chronic fatigue syndrome. Graves disease, which is also common in chronic fatigue syndrome. MECVS without IBS is also there. So basically, it looks like I, at that point in time, had a fair amount of similarities to chronic fatigue syndrome, although I was not an apparent. Now, if I go and update it to, let's just use the 12%, the numbers were changed. In some cases, we have one, two, three, four. Ah, so if I don't go to the extreme values, the number of items that are matches drops down. I still have just little ones indicating I have probably a dysfunction. 0 0.01 indicates highly likely dysfunction, but what the nature of dysfunction is is unclear. Depression is what I have the greatest risk as. Fortunately, my DNA is that of a Pollyanna, which is probably why I don't have clinical depression or haven't had ever clinical depression. Go over to a different period of time. Again, we still find this concerning shifts. Chronic kidney disease shows up there. We have stomach issues and even potential hit of Parkinson, which is a very high percentage. So there, and we have again, one, two, three, four, five, six. And if I say, okay, let's be more precise. And we have a few more things showing up. Some of the other ones also showing up. Again, what the magic number is, we don't know. We have a choice. You can choose. So they're looking at the most extreme values, which in theory would be the best match for the existing studies. Or you can do a more broad one. Again, we don't have enough information from the studies to know which ones to go through. And going on, and let's see where I am at the moment. At the moment, I go down and it gets. I don't have anything being highlighted. In other words, um, after the relapse the progress has basically wiped out all of the um disease characteristics across me at the six percent level i uh, hop up to 24 percent uh and 24 percent okay i now at significant so i have gone from being significant in the finest six percent level to 18 percent 12 percent but not 6%. In other words, I would appear to have improved with less bacteria associated with variety of conditions, which is a good sign. Not rid of them, because if I become more slack, I end up having it showing up. And there by gain, we are expecting 
three by random, we only have two. And just one particular one is probably the most indicative of whether or not you have a microbiome dysfunction. So that is basically it. Um, oh, of course, when you click on any of them, let's go back to one which had a bit more interesting fun here. And oh, let's go to Parkinson's disease. And what you will do is you'll see what the matches are there. And just discover, I fear I have a, oh, I know why, 24%. Okay, now we can see all of the matches when we are more relaxed. In other words, when we don't go for the highest values, but the higher values, it appears more significant again. We do not know what the best numbers are. My gut feeling is 6% showing up is a far stronger indication of a possible probable problem than 24%. So take it with a bit of common sense, Cisco sense, unfortunately, and enjoy. That's it.